Hey, good morning, welcome back guys. So I'm back at uh, beautiful Kinkuna Beach. This is gonna be part two of the lightweight hammock setup today. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something different. I'm gonna show you how quick it is to, to set up. So I'm gonna set this camp up and then we'll catch up to where we reached up to part one a couple of days ago and continue from there. So Okay, you saw how quick that is to set up guys. Now the other day we went a little bit further, but I didn't go into great details on a couple of things that I think it's worthwhile mentioning in regards to the underquilt. And also, I mentioned about the angles. There is a certain angle that you gotta set these ropes on that attaches to the hammock. And a trick that I found particularly with the wall bonnet blackbird hammocks, if you set your finger like a pistol grip, and put your pinky pointy finger straight out, your thumb up, that angle there is the ideal angle to set those cables up, those, those ropes up. So we're just gonna check that. So that's just a tad, that's a tad too much of an angle. Now to adjust these, so you just pull that, as you pull this one in, and that tightens that angle up. Now another thing I didn't mention the other day when you're setting up these wall bonnet blackbird hammocks, the foot end, you want it a little bit higher than the head end. I think that looks ideal. So as you can see, I've got an ideal angle on there. So now we'll go grab the underquilt, and a few things I want to explain about the underquilt. Now, 
Congrats to the under quilt. Remember the other day I mentioned that each under quilt are made specifically to certain each hammock. Now the reason for that is to stop any air gaps in between your under quilt and your hammock. So if you have any air gaps between your under quilt and your hammock, you're going to get a layer of cold will come in between you and that under quilt. And nothing, whatever you do, anything you, you will try, you will not get warm. So remember I mentioned what you see here, this under quilt. I used this in the middle of winter, up around Canberra and up around the Blue Mountains on the, when it's on the verge of snowing. So it's well below negative. And I can tell you now, I was toasty warm inside that thing. So it's really important that you get an underquilt that matches your hammock. Now this has got a head end and it's got a tail end. The head end is the one that's got the war bonnet emblem on there. So we know the head end of the hammock's up that end. So I'm going to attach this up that end first. And when I get down this end I'll show you how it hooks over the bunch in here. All right, the wind's picked up a bit. It's a lovely day here. So this is the elastic. So you can see the elastic. The elastic actually, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, sleeves that are sewn in here. And elastic goes right through there. And this is just your, like your regular elastics. You'll see you'll get a BCF and so on. So at the end of the, ga the hammocks, I've got a gathering where they gather all the, the nylon and tie it off. So that just simply hooks over the top of that. And that's it, so that's a hammock done. Now again, I've got it too far. So I'm just gonna slide this back. A tap. Okay, so you want it about there. Make sure all the, the gathering, the hammock, you want to make sure. Now that's it. Now another thing. I mentioned that because I was an ultra lightweight hiker, I didn't want to carry much weight. So we carry basically grams. I mean, if we could sell, save a gram, we'd, we'd save a gram. So it's got to that extent. So you can see that that's, you can get these under quilts that are full length. But because we wanted to save weight, and not only that, a three quarter length under quilt is a lot cheaper, particularly when they're filled with goose down, than a full quilt that's full of goose down. So what we used, what we used, I just got it out of camera here, I'll just go grab it that keeps our warm under our legs. So all you ladies out there will know what these are. So these are basically like those exercise pads that you use. So we just get a thin strip. The colder the climate, the thicker you use this. Believe it or not, this is my cold one. <laughs> I've got another one at home that's probably only about two or three mils thick that I use for summertime, the warmer climates. Uh, this is what I use for winter. So this, then goes, sits, our legs are coming up this end here. So this will sit under this part here. So I'll simply unzip this and sit that in around the spot where I think it would be suitable. And then when you climb in there, you can adjust that to suit. Now that under quilt is still a little bit that's better. Now the beauty with this, you don't need a pillow, but I usually always take a pillow with me. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring the pillow. This is where we were up to the other day. Now, you're probably wondering, 
how do I stay dry? <laughs> so we use a tarp. All right, so we use a tarp. Now we don't use any normal tarp. I've got two tarps here. I've got one tarp that I usually use for car-based camping, which is what I'm gonna set up now. And I've got another tarp that I use when I was to go out bushwalking. And that particular tarp is made out of a Cuban fiber material. So it's extremely lightweight. In saying that, even the nylon tarp I've got is very lightweight. But if you compare the two, there's quite a bit of difference in weight. Well, for ultra high light, lightweight hikers, there is quite a difference in weight. 100 grams to us is a lot of difference in weight. Because you've got 100 grams here, 50 grams there, 4 grams here. Before you know it, you've got a huge amount of weight. But in my case, because we're just setting that up as a car bay system, weight's not an issue. So, before we do that though, again, as I mentioned, we need to look after these trees. Okay, it's very important you look after these trees. So I've got another rope cable and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount across here. Now Luke, you're gonna love this section coming up, seeing you loving knots. You wait till you see all the different ties, knots that's coming up on this thing. Here it is, guy. This is what we're gonna to use to attach the tarp over the top of this. So in order to make this quick, we set these up so it doesn't take long to set up. Now you might be thinking, what if it's raining? How do you set this up while it's raining? Well, what you do, you set your tarp up first, then you set this up underneath. So, first end. Now don't ask me what these are called. It's been a while since I've delved into the technical side of these things and I knew what these are. But they're special type of fittings you get and you buy these from the States and the US. So basically this wraps around the tree. And then what you do then is you wrap this around the guts in the center there a few times and then you just I wrapped it around the wrong way it's a certain way you got to wrap these wrap these around like so and then that hooks on there and that ties off onto the tree so we'll do that we go along the next one is these now if I recall you yachties will know what these are. These are called Prusik knots. I'm pretty sure what they are. So it allows me, so I can adjust the width of where I attach the tarp onto. So the tarp, in the middle of the tarp, it's like an A-frame tarp. The center of the tarp has got a clip on it, which I'll show you shortly. And you clip it onto this. Now, depending on the length of the trees you set up, and whereabouts you want the tarp to set up, you adjust these Prusik knots. So in order to do that first, you, you loosen it off just in the middle here. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, once you've done that, then, as you can see, I can adjust that along the width. So that's adjustable. So we'll go back. And that's the other end of the Prusik knots. You might see there's something different there. I'll show you what that is shortly. But before we do that, let me just loosen this off a tad. Because once you tighten these Prusik knots up, believe me, they're not going to go anywhere. Okay, so that moves. This end is slightly different. Again, it's the touch with another Prusik knot. What this end does is we use this to adjust the length because obviously you can't get these made up to just suit a certain length so we can vary the length of the trees that we use and in order to get that tarp set up in the exact right spot we can adjust it by using these and then what you do this part wraps around the tree 
Now you notice there's no thick, there's no thick webbing on this. It's because this doesn't support a lot of weight. This only holding the weight of a tarp, which weighs next to nothing. And how that works is again, with this here, you wrap it around a tree, you wrap it around a few times there and you just pull that through and it's like a clamp there, it just clamps it in place. So you can see how quick that is to set up. So what we'll do now is we'll set up this far end first. Now again, you can vary the height as well. So what I showed you before, I'm wrapping that around a few times and then locking that in place. And that's it. Now, I'll run this over here. And what I'll do is I'll just relocate the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. So again, this wraps around the tree. But this will do, this will do the job. Now, next thing we need to do, we need to adjust these prussic knots so they're around about close to a foot away from the, each head end of the hammock. So you can see why it's important that that line is adjustable. So here's the two tarps. You could probably guess which is the ultra, ultra lightweight one. This one here. Now what I'm going to do, I know I said this is going to be a two-part video, so I'll leave this one as a two-part video, but I'll do a third one on the weights. So we'll grab a scale, and I'll show you the total weight, what all this weighs. But we're going to use this one now. This is the, the nylon one, so we're going to show you how I set that one up. Now before we do that, some of you are probably wondering, I'm going to be kept warm from underneath, but what's going to keep me warm up top? So we use a top quilt. Now you can use a conventional mummy style uh, sleeping bag, but the problem with those, they pack up very bulky. When you lay on them, remember the other day I mentioned when you lay on top of the sleeping bag, what you lay on top is compressed. So for us, lightweight, hikers and so on, and even car-based campers. For us lightweight car-based campers, every kilo makes a difference. By the end of the day, you know, you want to keep your vehicle down, you know, below weight. You don't want to go over that maximum weight that your vehicle is allowed to carry. So we use a top quilt. And what a top quilt is, it's basically similar to a sleeping bag, but it doesn't have this bottom part on it because we don't need that, because remember we're laying on top of this. So I'll show you what this looks like. Now, this is really lightweight. Same as the underquilt, this is filled with quality goose down. Now goose down is the best insulation material you can buy anywhere. There's just, you cannot get any better. Unfortunately, it's super expensive. It's very, very expensive. You'd be lucky to find anything with goose down in Australia with the quality that this is. This is 100% top quality goose down. You might see out the market there's a down sleeping bag here and there, but they're not the same. They're not the same. This is from quality top grade goose feathers. The insulation and the compactness for these compresses very well. And the insulation that these have, now you can see the size of this thing that came out of that small bag, particularly when that's fluffed up, you'll notice. So this is a top quilt. So you've got an area in here where you put your feet in. This has got like a elastic here, where you can tighten it up around the head. And then it's also got clips here as well. And if the weather warms up, these have also got clips down here along the bottom there. So you can open this up to let your feet breathe and not just that on the bottom here as well. You can open that up as well. So the design that you can vary the temperature, because these are very warm, believe me, this, this is all I use, this and a light jacket 
and a beanie in the middle of winter up in the Blue Mountains and that kept me toasty warm. So we'll just go and fit this inside here now. Guys, it's a beautiful day here at Kankuna today. Okay, that's it, so that's all ready. One more thing, I think it'd probably be easier if I show you now before I actually put the tarp up. Because once I put the tarp up, it's going to engulf this, fully enclose this, right down to probably about a foot off the ground. So it's like a, I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean, mean later. So it's not like a conventional tarp, it's just poof, straight out. These are special tarps and they've got a special shape to them. Interesting, hammocks. A lot of people, when I tell them that I predominantly camp and use a hammock, they tell you how in the world can you get comfortable in that? This is not a conventional hammock. This is not one of these hammocks where you lay in it and you're shaped like a banana. These, the material in this is cut in such a way that you lay flat. I know it doesn't look at it right now, but the way this material is cut, so you lay on in a bit of an angle. Okay, so, so that's your hammock there like that. And when you get into these particular hammocks, you lay on them on an angle like so. And what happens with that, and the way this is cut, that flattens it out. It gives you a flat lay. And believe me guys, when I tell you, you would be surprised how comfortable that is. I, I know of people in the States, these are very popular in America, and I know people in the States, and not just a few, quite many, who set this up in their bedroom at home. Particularly anyone who's got a bad back. If you lay on this, this thing does wonders to your back because there's no pressure points or anything like that. So it might give you a bit of a demo now how you get in. So I'll just move the camera around. Okay, hopefully you can see me now. All right, so we've got a midgy proof fly screen here. Now if you're in somewhere, obviously in the middle of winter, you're not gonna have midges and mozzies and stuff around like that. So you can actually remove this and, and it ties off at the back. But I always leave it on. These midgy fly proof, these midgy proof fly screens, you'll be amazed how much heat that actually traps inside. After you're laying this, with all this goose down surrounding you, after half an hour or so, you feel like you're laying on top of an electric blanket. I kid you not. And this midgy proof traps the heating. And it traps a certain amount of heat, so you've got it like a warm, insulated hammock inside. As long as you drop the wind from blowing in here. But in saying that, winter time, condensation, you will get a lot of condensation, but the condensation always builds up under your, your tarp. Okay, so hence the tarps away, the shapes are tarped, so when the condensation builds up, it just falls down and drops down on the end. So you don't want to fully enclose this too much, hence why we have the tarps come up certain we can adjust. By adjusting the height of this, well, you probably can't see it now, that, that yellow cable, that yellow rope that I just set up, we can have that higher or lower. I've got it set up fairly high at the moment, probably too high, but I've done that on a purpose just so you guys have got be able to see. But generally we'll have that set up down to about here. So it's about a foot away from you. And that way, that gives you about a foot gap along the bottom. So a bit of air can go through to, to drop down that condensation. Cause you don't want to get wet. You do not want to get wet particularly with these particular type of sleeping bags. If you get these wet, you're in strife. Now to get in. So we've got a full length zip here, quality YKK zip here. Make sure my feet's clear, clean. Okay, so you grab your hammock, pull it out a bit, and they make a very nice, comfy 
chair as you can see so you can sit here and you've got your chair as well and guys this is very comfortable <laughs> believe me when I tell you how comfy this is now I'm already seeing I'm just sitting here now and I'm already seeing that this is a bit low so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up and I'm just going to raise this up a tad So just bear with me, I'll set this up properly to the correct height. Okay, that's a bit higher now, that's probably more where it should be set. Alright, so again. Yeah, that's a lot better. So once you get it height, so you can just sit. So that's another thing. You don't need to take a chair with you when you want to save weight because you've got a perfectly comfortable chair here with a backrest, <laughs> as I showed you before. <laughs> that cool backrest. All right, so I'm going to get in this now. What I might do before I do that, so you guys can see properly, is I might remove this down top quilt, because I don't need the top quilt. She's pretty warm here. If I lay in here with that thing on the top of me, I'm going to roast. Oh, that's better. Let me tell you what, guys. She's nice and toasty and warm up in Queensland today. There you go. Beautiful. All right. There we go. So I've got my comfy chair. I can sit here and eat. And sometimes what I do is take... Um, I can't recall what they're called now, but we usually also take a flooring, piece of flooring with us because another big advantage with these quilts, these uh, hammocks, sorry, is that you can set these up on any ground. Now I've set this up when I used to hike halfway up the top of a cliff mountain. There's no way in the world you could set up a tent, let alone not just a tent, even like a little bivy sleeping on the ground where I found two sturdy trees and tied this up between and slept in them. So as long as you've got trees, now they don't need to be very, very strong. And that's another thing with these type of hammocks, the way they're designed. That angle that I told you about, that that rope is set, there's a lot of scientific method goes into that. That angle also reduces the stress that's on those trees. Hence why we do not need to carry very wide uh, webbing. Now if you want to in your vehicle based, you can get some webbing a lot wider than that, but you won't need it because they will not cause any ring bark. So you'll think, now you can see I'm not as light as I used to be when I was hiking. And yet, I'm confident, I've got no problems. I know that that rope will hold my weight. So again, that special rope that I got from the States as well. But I can't recall what it's called now. I'll have to do some research and find out. I used to be all into the technical names of all this stuff here, but it got to the point where once I had my camp set up, I, I didn't give a damn. I just wanted to go out and enjoy and just went out and that's it, went camping and enjoyed. Uh, and it's a bore and without breaking your back with such big packs. So, without jibber jabbering too much. Hey Buck. <laughs> How you going Buck? I hope you're watching this Buck. Promise I won't take over your jibber jabbering too much. <laughs> Alright. I don't know, do people want me to jibber jabber? Don't know. Alright. Okay, let's get in this thing. That's it guys. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm laying flat. And believe me, this is really comfortable. So you can see I'm laying on an angle. And I'm reasonably flat there. If I adjust this, I could probably flat. Already I can feel the heat that's coming from that underquilt underneath me. It's not adjusted properly, I just need to adjust it on the other side a bit, but I can already feel that heat. 
So, but what I'm going to do is I'll grab my other little camera and I'll bring this inside and show you what it looks like inside. So I've got my little DJI Osmo pocket here. Ah. Right, let's set this little fella up. So you guys, and I'll show you what it looks like in here. And I wanted to show you another feature. There's no lack of features on this thing. <laughs> I want to show you a really cute feature that I haven't mentioned this yet. But I have to go inside to show you that. So let's let me turn this thing on. Okay, I've got my little DJI Osmo Pocket going on here now. So let's go jump inside. I want to show you another thing here, another trick to get the tension adjusted correctly on this rope. See this rope here? This is a very critical part of your hammock. You know you've got a good set when you can do that. Okay, if you can grab your hammock, your cable, and turn it at a 45 degree angle and stop there, I've got this set up perfect. All right, so now I want to show you the room. So you can see there the way the hammock is cut out. So my feet is nice and straight there. Now there's a zip there, I can just reach up and close that zip, but I won't do it right now. All right. Now, something I, I mentioned to you before, I want you to see. Look in here, there's a shelf. You've got your own shelf. So you can put your phones in there, you can put your torch in there, you can put your hat in there and so on. Okay, so that's a shelf that's made specifically for the War Bonnet Blackbird Hammock. I don't know if any other, actually let me see if I flip this out. Now I don't know if there is any other hammocks out there that have a shelf like that. So I think that's a cool feature. But I can't tell you how comfy this is. <laughs> this is just awesome this guys. Love it. So as much as I want to stay in here. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy this <laughs> it's probably best otherwise this will be one very long video it's probably best now that I go and show you this tarp <laughs> okay <laughs> your shoes are right there so cool. <laughs> right let's show you this tarp shall we Camo. I used to hike up mountains and camping spots where you're not supposed to and no one, and I'd never get caught. But I didn't mention that. All right, so now we've got to find the center of this. Uh, just bear with me here. Where are we? Here we go. So there you are. There are those clips that these hook into that I mentioned before. So there's a top and a bottom of this. There's the top. So let's go set this up on this side here first. Now it's a bit windy here but should be right. Clips in there. And I've got to grab some pegs shortly. You see, you see here you've got these little elastic hooks on here, so in the corner of these, so like a spring, so they peg out the corners. Now I just got to wait, look for the, the other centre part, here it is. Now that's too loose, so we need to tighten that. Again, that's showing you why 
why we use these special prusik knots at the end. Perfect. Now this is what you do before, if it's raining, this is what you do. You could set this up really quick in literally minutes. You just work that line out, hook that on, get four pegs, peg these out and you're done. So I'm going to go grab the pegs now. One in each corner. If you trust the snow, snow peg pegs and Japanese copperhead hammer. <laughs> and again, these are also adjusted with Prusik knots. I know you probably can't see me right now but this this shelter is storm proof I've been through some major storms with this and never had an issue it's solid and extremely waterproof once you get this shelter up so as you can see it's A-framed That's actually ideal. That is set up the perfect height there. Now you also got these attachment points here where if it's really blowing a lot of wind you can tie these out like so and I've got a couple of other elastics in the car and you can either just grab a, a stick around so high and just pick it out here and that will hold that up like so as well and it gives you a bit more room inside particularly if there's a lot of condensation around otherwise when you get in and out your back will rub against this and you'll get a wet back you don't want that so you've got like little doors on the end here so you can peg these closed like so so you can see that how that's fully enclosed in the only other additional thing it would do, if there's a bit of wind around, just put some guy lines out here. So, what we'll do is grab the camera and I'll show you what it looks like set up inside. So we're approaching inside. You can see how nice and cosy that is inside. So you can see what it looks like inside. So you can see what I mean, she's quite closed in. So you could have a decent storm come through and you're perfectly safe. So guys, that's what she looks like inside. So let's, can you see the under quilt? Hopefully you can see the under quilt there. That's it, all set up. So, now, if there's any questions, anything you want, more you want to know about this, just drop down below any questions and I'll answer them as best as I can. Like I mentioned, everything you see here, I purchased all this from the States and America. Now, I know there are a couple of manufacturers in Australia that are starting to make particularly tarps etc and lightweight gear for ultra lightweight hikers or even anyone who wants to save some weight weight in the vehicles terra rossa gear down in uh, melbourne used to be in sydney an old mate of mine he's down in melbourne now so if you're watching this best of luck to the conditions down there i hope you get your freedom back soon so you can go out camping we're lucky up here in queensland so far I'll do another video one day specifically on the ultra lightweight Cuban fibre 
tarp. I was going to show you that today, but it's been a long day and I have to get back home because I'm cooking up a roast on the spit. So I've got some visitors coming over tonight, so I need to get that prepared and I'm going to cook that over a, a low heat for some time, so I have to get back. So please subscribe. That way you don't miss out any future videos and put a like if you like this. As I mentioned, there's going to be another addition to this video. I'm going to do another one and show you the weights of all these to give you an idea uh, what, what each component weighs and the total weight of both the shelter, chairs and sleeping, sleeping bag, the whole works combined and show you just how compact I can pack it up as well and, and I'll show you some of my backpacks that I've used over the years. So, cheers! Those who watched right to the end, I know this is a long video, hence why I've split it up in two parts. But those who watched to the end, thanks for watching. Till next time, cheers!